up guys this is ash and uh i'm here to give you a little run through on my we are friends track sort of a tutorial in a sense not really though mind you uh you'll probably notice i have a bunch of tracks frozen that's because my computer is kind of a hunk of junk uh and running obs and logic pro uh, i tried to record this tutorial earlier and uh, i was just crashing constantly so i found a workaround and uh hopefully that doesn't make things worse or anything also a stipulation this is my uh my work file the way i kind of write songs is i start with uh, a, a work file basically i write the song start to finish uh usually i try to get it done in about a day and that's not like a bragging thing or anything that's just a time constraint sort of thing i'm always you know going to work and you know having a social life and all that stuff mind you i don't have much of a social life um I kind of have to bang things out pretty quickly just to keep up with the schedule. Uh, so this song was actually one of those songs, luckily enough. Um, I had just got back from a really great little group we get together, a mastermind group, uh, talking about productions in the city. Um, and they were asking me stuff like, uh, um, wh where do I want to play my music? Wh where does it want to go? Um, because I was kind of producing more chiller stuff. So I went home and I was like, well... I got to start writing stuff that's a little, you know, louder, bigger, you know, more exciting. Um, so I had the idea of like crossing influences from like Porter Robinson or John Hopkins or any of these people. Uh, and I decided to write this song called Human. So with that, it kind of has that that like really slamming kick. And that's how I started it. Uh, actually, funnily enough, this is a Rinzen kick. Um, learn something from the Dead Mouse Masterclass uh, that a kick's a kick, so. That's from Rinzen. That's from the uh, splice pack that Mousetrap did a little while ago. Mind you, I got a little top kick riding along on top of it as well. To kind of drive the energy a little bit. Uh, that's just layering kicks 101. Um... As you can see, I also put everything out as uh, audio files. I've always just been a drag and drop, and I know that actually would attribute to my project being quite slow. Uh, it's just a bad habit that I've always had as a as a visual learner, as a visual producer. Uh, I like to see everything out in the open like this. Um, there's no right or wrong way to do it. I'm probably probably people are going to call me on that and say this is the wrong way to do it, just the way I've done it. Uh, so there's a few things in here. Uh, I have uh, an extensive library of Foley that I, I recorded myself. Um, I went home for three weeks home way out in the woods uh, with, oh, I got it right here, my Zoom handy recorder. Um, and I use this thing all the time. I stick this in the windowsill when it's raining. I uh, go walk around the city and get ambient noises and stuff because I feel like it's almost like natural modular right it's uh something that you can't really computer generate it's a lot of these sounds and it uh creates this really organic sounding sound uh so i'll play a little loop here so a lot of the times the percussion in my songs is just sticks and like that sliding sound is in a garage, I'm pretty sure, just sliding some metal. Um, these are all sticks. I remember where I was uh, recording these. I was just snapping them by a campfire with my Zoom handy. You can hear the birds in the background. It's in the afternoon. Uh, that's something I always like to put into my tracks because it, it's kind of part of my brand as the nature technology thing. Um, and it really, I think it kind of plays along to my sound really well, having things like that in it. Uh, another example of that, I always use rain effects. And everybody, if you've listened to my music, you know that's in every every friggin' song. Um, so in the breakdowns, I like to fill it with a choir. Uh, actually, that that's one of the sounds in here is uh, a choir of uh, frogs from my hometown in a swamp. I went out in a swamp, middle of the night. Ordered a bunch of frogs. Reminds me of home. And you can kind of layer all these sounds to, to make a, an atmosphere, right? We 
because I get a lot of uh, mood out of adding textures like that to uh, piano melodies and things. That was a bad example because no piano is playing, so I'm going to try that again. <laughs> no piano played. Um, I don't understand what. Oh, I know what's wrong. It's because I'm in the work file. I did all the, the pre piano stuff in the master file. Uh, so we'll get to that later. I'm, I'm glad you enjoyed that uh, little, little section of chimes and rain and stuff. Um, another thing I like to do going on to piano, some of these instruments that I use, uh, I always make my reverbs out of uh, piano, um, which is kind of a funny way of doing it. Um, I don't know if I can... Yeah, oh, I can turn off all these with the, the freeze on. So I run a little arpeggiator through just a standard uh, piano chord um, right here. Uh, the notes are velocity automated because I was considering doing a little piano melody like that, and I always do um, this big uh, velocity to make it seem like I'm actually playing the piano, but I'm not. So here's what it sounds like raw. Oh no, it is frozen, so you can't hear that. Great. I'm gonna unfreeze this real quick, like. So it doesn't sound like much, but if you do turn on all of these instruments, uh, well, mostly, uh, sorry, instruments, effects, uh, I usually throw two Valhalla's on, and I use the stock uh, channel EQ to cut it to around 1000 hertz. And you can get a really nice, warm-sounding pad and, and verb in the background. Which is something I do in all of my songs as well. Uh, it, it's this sound that I was trying to find for ages. I never knew how anybody made it. And then I figured, oh, it's just piano. Um, cool instrument here. Uh, this is Spitfire Audio's uh, Soft Piano. And you can go to their website and get this for free. And it sounds incredible. Uh, what else do we got here? I got a standard re-space rolling along in the background. It's a little too loud in the work file. Uh, a few other pads. Um, the the idea, the the uh, Porter Robinson idea that I was playing off earlier, uh, is this uh, arp that I made in Serum uh, with a arpeggiator on it. Oh, yep, with an arpeggiator on it on one sixty fourth. So it sounds like this. And without it, it sounds like this. So there's a lot of just stock plugins, right? I guess uh, uh, the point of me doing this is to kind of say you don't really need any any expensive gear to make really cool sounding music. Like uh, obviously, I have a few programs in here that are worth a little bit of money, like Ozone Nine, which I just updated to recently, uh, even Logic Pro on its own. But a lot of these instruments are free. LFO tool is like forty bucks. Just little things to add some icing on the cake, I guess, but more for mixing and mastering if you just want to write music you don't really need much beyond the the basics uh serum is rent to own um which i use serum a ton uh but like you get one or two instruments like that and you should be good to go i mean even my computer is years old now and i know uh producers that would shock you on the label who are using computers that are like 10 years old and barely run and it's wild. Not saying it wouldn't be great to have a top of the line brand new computer. It's just you can still get away with making music on on lesser gear. Um, I think probably people would want to hear how I made the lead pluck. Uh, and that one is a similar situation. It was kind of a fluke. So you have the same chords that you have the, the piano pad in sound like this. Really shitty on the ears, uh, really aggressive sounding. 
Uh, so I was playing around with arpeggiators again, just the standard arpeggiator. I ran the 164th like it did on the wild arp there. But it sounded a little weird, uh, so I layered an arpeggiator and put on a, a 1 8th triplet, and that's how I got my, my lead arp for the song. Happy little accidents, as Bob Ross would say. Uh, then we got uh, the, the, the vocal um, screaming sound is just a splice sample. Um, I'm going to mute all that out. I'm using a trackpad right now. I don't have a mouse. My mouse is broken. So the, uh, that sound is just a, a splice sample. So I don't have huge access to, you know, a plethora of singers or, you know, a studio to record this stuff in. Mind you, I do know some pretty fantastic singers like uh, Leonie Gray. She's uh, the singer that was on Melancholia. Um, but I just haven't built up a library of enough stuff yet to um, be able to use those in any song. So essentially what I did to, to get it to sound big like that is it is layered uh, quite a few times. Uh, I added uh, clip distortion, just stock plug-in, a little uh, stereo imaging. I'm saying um and ah a lot. There's a Canadian joke. It sounds like Justin Trudeau. <laughs> um, threw in a Bit Crusher and my favorite plugin, uh, Valhalla Room with uh, Long Decay. Um, so with that, a little there's a little reverse section and then it kind of adds to the explosiveness of the i don't want to say the word drop but the drop uh it carries you into the next section and i think that's the big like aha kind of moment of the song <laughs> Oh, and here it is. I turned off the freezing, so now the, the project is crashing a little bit, which is pretty standard in my life, um, which is a good segue into what I do next when I'm working on songs, is uh, I made this look all pretty for the tutorial. So, I labeled it, well, not as pretty as some. I at least labeled all the tracks, because usually I don't do anything like that. I find it slows me down, and when you're writing a song, you kind of want to ride that momentum of... Uh, you know, you're you're vibing with it. You're you're rolling with it. You're having a great time. You don't want to um, lose that kind of edge, that that inspiration. Uh, so I never label anything until the end. Um, so like, let's say five hours into a writing session, I've got like the basis down or whatever. I'll uh, export all these out uh, into WAV files and bring them back into another project, which is where we're going to now. There's going to be a hard cut because I'm going to switch this. And I'm back. Uh, sorry for the delay. I guess for you it's instantaneous. Um, so what I'll do after the fact is I bring everything into um, Logic Pro again, into a new project file. Um, and I'll throw all the audio files in, in their little groups. And that's when I get down to uh, the actual EQing. Mind you, I've done a lot of the EQing in the previous track. Um, and I recently got FabFilter, but as you can see, I hardly used it in this project file, which is unfortunate because I feel like I could have made this song sound a little better, but you know, time constraints, stuff like that. It's the industry, nothing you can do about it. I think it turned out well enough. Um, you know, in, in like six months, I'm gonna hate it anyways. Like most, most songs people write, they end up not liking. Not saying I don't like it now. Uh, so FabFilter, I'm just kind of using to cut out all the crummy offending frequencies. Um, I have it on the master channel. So I, I'll actually roll through uh, and notch out all the uh, offending frequencies that, that are really too sharp or obnoxious or whatever. Because um, it cleans up a lot of space in the track. And when you're playing a track out live, you don't want to blow somebody's eardrums out. Because most of the in uh, us industry people have hardly any hearing left anyways from similar situations like that i throw uh this is for mastering i like to put uh the the little uh side eq to cut out all the bass frequencies on the side this is a new technique that i learned that uh i know everybody else knows um where you cut out a little under i usually do around 200 hertz and that's usually just where the kick in the bass is 
uh, you can cut out all the low frequencies of the stereo field, which opens up so much more room for uh, turning up the volume. I have a cat scratching at my door trying to get in right now if you hear any funny sounds on the side. Um, everything else is just kind of standard. I got a brick wall at the end for and anything you wouldn't hear anyways. Um, I like to take those out because that's just sonic noise that's taking up space in the mix. It's all about mixing and mastering. It's all about getting your volumes right. So having all your volumes kind of around uh, like flat zero. Uh, and actually what, what I'm doing right now by bringing all these in is uh, doing flat fader mixing. I, I know, like look at uh, this one, this one isn't. Because um, there is some automation on the track now. But it's bringing everything to zero and then using uh, using gain automation to... Gain automation. Uh, I just use a stock gain to bring it down, get it to level, so it sounds a little better. Um, I put a little expander on here. Crisp up. And then I have uh, three adaptive limiters stacked. I usually push it right to the edge. Um... Just, uh, just like a little incremental at a time so you can get it back up to the sound and that, that squashes the volume. I don't know if people know this, <laughs> but this is my process anyways. I'm sure a lot of people know this and a lot of people are yawning and shaking their heads, but this is the Ash tutorial after all. Uh, and then I recently just updated from uh, Ozone 6 to Ozone 9, which is... Uh, brought up my loudness by about a decibel, which is interesting that I could kind of pull that from just getting this. I don't do a lot to the mix. I actually brought down some of the bass on this one because the bass is overwhelming and this is a recent thing I've done because uh, I, I do notice that the, the bass is a little loud in human. Um, it's because I played it out recently and I was like, oh, that's, that's a bit loud. And so I turned it down a little bit on this master to show you guys. Um, you, you put a maximizer on, I usually bring the threshold way down, and then you have a relatively loud track. Uh, I, I just use Peak and R RMS, uh, I forget what the other one everybody's using is. That's my master. Um, you can see it's really not hitting too loud. About minus eight. I don't really go much louder than that. I've been getting minus seven, minus six on some tracks, but it doesn't really matter when things are uploaded to Spotify and Apple Music and stuff. It always hits that uh, algorithm anyways that turns up the volume, or you can just turn up the volume on my tracks. I'd, I'd prefer dynamic range to having an incredibly... I, I mean, yes, it's impressive, but that's not really how I want to spend my time. I don't want to spend my time writing tunes and stuff. Um, so actually, now that we're back in here, this is where the piano is. I can talk about piano a little bit. I love putting piano in my songs. I usually use two different pianos. I use, of course, Tracks Frozen. I usually use two different pianos for my songs. I use uh, Contacts the Giant, which is great for those deep bassier sounds uh like actual actual sounding piano i'll bring up the piano roll it's not a very exciting piano roll it just kind of trails down i guess i could make it so you could see that behind my face don't mind me i'm just checking my phone uh, and then I like to do all the pretty twinkly piano on top with uh, that the lab Spitfire, uh, which is such an incredible sounding piano. Makes you want to cry. And I have Valhalla maxed on that. That's not how I always do it, but that's the way it worked in this track. Um, and now I can finally do the example uh, with the Foley.
I love melancholy. Uh, most of my songs end up being in minor keys. Uh, I find that's the best way to convey emotion in music is is kind of drawing on these sadder tones. It's uh, a, a little easier to draw emotions from these sadder kind of melodies than say if you were you're making a happy song. You know, um, it's harder to convey happiness than than sadness. I find. Um, so I tend to lean a little heavier on these these sadder melodies, these sadder songs. Um, this one turned a little rough, which works well in in a you know club environment or something like that. But I've always been a fan of melancholy. <laughs> My voice crack of melancholy. Uh, insert melancholia. Go pick that up. It's still out. It's doing all right. You know who would have thought? Not me. <laughs> But uh, yeah, that's uh, that's kind of uh, my writing style. That's my sound. Is this like uh, you know, nature, uh, technology blended together, um, with a touch of touch of sadness. Just uh, something I draw on for for writing music. I think you should write from your heart. I know that's cheesy and lame, uh, but you should be writing music that you want to listen to. You shouldn't be writing music that you want a label to sign or uh that that you're trying to match somebody's sound you should be you should be writing music that you want to listen to and maybe that's the music you want to listen to so i guess uh final final notes on things um just keep writing music all the time never stop because there's guys out there like sistemas who in the time i did this tutorial have written like 20 freaking songs like amazing talented young musicians who are are just going through the the numbers like i uh grew up in a place didn't really have internet so i didn't have tutorials or anything like this so you have such a beautiful opportunity to get started early because i was writing music um like 2005 or something i started and i grew up in the country we still don't have internet there um, and all of my stuff is was trial of trial and error until about 2011 when I uh, moved out to Vancouver and I had high speed internet so I could start to learn. A few bad decisions later, it's 2016. I started taking this really seriously every day, sitting in my room, letting myself go, letting my body fall apart, growing my hair out crazy, <laughs> trying to trying to make this a reality because i know um you go in and you see these people like you, you like i watched uh res and atlas during the bus tour and i uh, front and center and they were playing their show and i thought to myself why the heck can't i do this I, like i should be able to be up there right on the on the top of the world like it's feasible if, if anybody you, you know if you want to be an astronaut people are astronauts that means you can be an astronaut so there's there's people signed on to Mousetrap. There's people touring the world making music. You should be able to do that given enough time. You put in the time and the effort. You should be able to do that. Uh, that's my motivational speak of the week right there. Um, but yeah, that's that's kind of my process how I write things. I usually just do you know I got an idea in my head and I start laying down the tracks like a train barreling down, um, and then. Before you know it, start to finish. You, you get really fast at it once you start doing it every day. Like there's like four or five hundred songs over the, the course of my career that I've uh, that I've written that'll never see the day of light. But every bad song you write is a bad song that you don't have to write ever again. So just keep writing music. I didn't really expect this to, to become something of a, a, a motivational talk. It's supposed to be a tutorial, but... Uh, I'm not as technical as as most producers who are, you know, you're probably going to get some tutorials of guys who are just, just like beyond me in technical knowledge, you know. I never went to school for it. I mostly learned from tutorials. There's still stuff that I'm learning today that are obvious to other people. Uh, <laughs> people come into my house and they see my projects and they are shocked that that I, I can make things sound pretty good for for my lack of knowledge. So anyone can do it you know just if if it's what you want to do just do it so uh <laughs> go go out and stream my track human uh out on we are friends 
I don't know if it's out yet, but uh, out on We Are Friends, December thirteenth, uh, right after right after Dead Mouse, the alphabet saved my life again on that one. Uh, streaming a bunch, buy it, buy the rest of them. I got a lot of friends who are on this compilation, which is awesome. Uh, and I'm gonna leave with uh, I'm just gonna play the song, and then I'm gonna awkwardly walk away and stop recording. <laughs> 